Hey guys, Hyrulean here. Welcome to a tutorial video. Today I'm going to teach you how to use the software Xpatter. Um, so Xpatter is a $10 software that allows you to use a controller, like the one I have in my hands, which is this one, um, as a keyboard and mouse, basically. Um, so that's useful for games that don't have controller support, and it's also useful for doing certain things on Windows, like um, starting Windows Media Player and playing and pausing stuff if you don't have keyboard shortcuts for that like I do on my keyboard. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have a controller. I'm using the Logitech F310. Um, and make sure you have the drivers installed. Some need them, some don't. It, it depends on your controller. That part's really specific and I'm not going to go into it very much in this video. Uh, but the second thing you need to do is go buy XPatter. It's a great software. It's totally worth $10. And if you want, you can finish watching this video and see the kind of stuff you can do with it before you buy it. That'd probably be good. I wouldn't recommend just blindly buying anything for that matter. But um, So, once you have XPatter downloaded, the first thing you're going to want to do is launch it. And it will not look like this at all. I can guarantee that. So, it'll actually start up a little more like this. Um, it'll detect your controller, and then it'll have this screen here, and it'll say, click new to create a layout. So it'll automatically detect your controller and show it up here. And this works with any controller that's compatible with PCs. So I have the Logitech F310. And um, so what you're going to want to do is find a controller image for your controller, which mine was really easy to find. I just had to go on the Logitech website and make one up real quick. Or you could go to the XPatter forums, and they have a lot already made as well. Um, and it has to be a .bitmap file in order to work with this software. Keep that in your mind as you're making a file for this or finding one on the internet. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is click open if you have one saved on your computer or you can copy and paste if you'd like. And um, it'll go to the file searcher. So I have mine on my desktop ready to go so I'll just open it up here. Um, and then you'll have your controller in here and it'll be set to go. So first thing you're going to want to do is click on sticks and enable the, both the sticks which it'll ask for you to press left and right on the sticks so left basically once you press left and up on your first stick it'll bring up the circle which you want to put over the picture as to where it is on the controller which mine is right there um, and then you want to enable the second stick and it'll ask you to press left and up again and you want to drag that one over your second stick and all controllers are different, so yours might not even have any sticks on it. I have one sitting on my desk here that doesn't have a stick on it. Um, it doesn't have any. It only has a D-pad. That's it. Um, so once you have your sticks done, um, and I'll put into the software like that, you can switch on to your D-pad. So click on D-pad and click Enable, and it'll ask you to press up, down, left, and right on your D-pad. And then it'll bring up this, which you just put on top of your D-pad like that. Um, one complaint I have with the software is that you can't resize it, so everything's a little big. Uh, but that should be okay because it looks right in the software. Uh, first, I'm going to explain how to add triggers and bumpers. So there is a trigger section. Now, this is dependent on your controller. Uh, depending on if your controller is a certain input source or not, um, you should be able to use this. And if you click Enable here, it'll ask you to hold the left trigger. And if you hold your left trigger and it says... Uh, this trigger is analog, is not analog, add as a button, then you're going to want to add the trigger as a button instead. So to add a button, you just press the button you want to add. So I'm going to add the A button. And you press it, and then it pops up as whatever button number it is, which you can change the name of it. So I'm going to change it to A. And then just sort of drag it over the picture of the button on the controller so you know where it is when you're pressing it. And make sure you do it right, because otherwise you could have the A button mapped to the B button on the picture. So whenever you press A, it'll actually press B on the picture. So you got to be very careful about that. So some buttons on the controller do not work in XPatter as a button that you can actually press. Like the Mode button here and the Logitech button. Those buttons have special functions on my controller, which are completely separate to the actual software and do nothing for the software. So those will be able to be set. But I can set the Back button here. Uh, the start button, uh, and X, Y, and B, I highly rec recommend renaming them as well. Um, it makes it a lot easier to use the software if you do. And then also, if your triggers did not let you put them in through the trigger section, you'll have to put them in as buttons, which I'm doing right now, and you just drag them to these. 
and your bumpers, which you'll put up here. And then your controller is all set up, so you can click OK, or you can modify the names of the buttons if you'd like, or you can change the image if you put in the wrong one. Um, but since I already have this done with the controller, I'm just going to exit out. And here is my controller setup. I already have mouse bound here. Let me just get rid of that. And alright, that's how you get your controller set up. So now you should have your controller set up inside of XPatter. Um, now press all the buttons on your controller to make sure that they match up to the actual buttons on the picture. And just make sure you did everything right, because you wouldn't want to start working now on the actual profiles with um, a controller that isn't mapped correctly. So just make sure they all work, and it looks like mine do. Alright, so now I'm going to teach you what all of the buttons do inside of the XPatter software. Oh, and I nearly forgot. As a quick note, if there's anything you think I've missed in this tutorial, there's a help button right here in XPatter that has everything you might need to know. So this is the settings button. The settings button brings up a bunch of different options for you to select or deselect to modify the way XPatter works. For this tutorial, I'm going to leave all of the settings the way they are. So the next button I'm going to show you is the controller button here. This button allows you to open any controller that you've saved previously or create new ones. Um, it also allows you to modify the controller that you have currently loaded. So if, during the first couple of steps of this tutorial, if you messed anything up on here, you can modify them by clicking the gear here or going here and then clicking settings. This button is the profile button. This button allows you to do um, a bunch of different profiles for the same controller. So let's say we set this controller to play P when we press the back button here. This is a really easy command and if we open up notepad I can show you real quick that when I press the back button on my controller it makes a P appear. It's relatively simple. Uh, but we can save this profile now. We can save it as P dot X pattern profile and now it's an X pattern profile file and um, we can create a new one which will allow us to have a new configuration, so now we'll make it show, uh, not number pad 8, we'll have it show off an O instead. So now if we go here now, it shows O instead. So now we can go back to the X pattern button here and click open, and we can open our previous one, which is P. And then it'll ask us if we want to save, which will save this one as O. And now it'll reload the P, so we can go back to our note document and press the back button, and there we go, we have the P instead now. Alright, well that's how the profile button works. So our next buttons we have are all of these buttons down here. So what these are, is basically these are like profiles in a single profile. So here, if we go back to here again and set this back to P, and then we go to click this 2 here, it'll set it to a different page, and we can set that one to O. So now whenever we click on the different numbers, it'll change what it does. So now we can go back to the notepad here, um, and we can press the back button, it'll make a P. And then we click on 2, and now it'll make O's. And there you go. That's how the number selection buttons work, if you will. So now comes the really fun part, actually setting up the controller to do things. Um, so here, make sure you have an untitled profile loaded. If you don't, go click here and click New. Uh, uh, and now we're going to set up the buttons to actually play and pause the Windows Media Player that I have over here. Uh, so first I'm going to make play the start button. So we're going to click here and click the play button. Um, and over here back button is going to be the stop button. It's really easy. All you have to do is click and then click whatever button you want it to go on. It's really simple. It's dead simple as a matter of fact. Um, and now we're going to make volume up and down on here, which I probably won't test that in the video because I don't want it to get screwed up. And then fast forward or skip and then left skip on here, um, set to those. So now we should be set up to go. Let's press the play button and see if it works. There we go. The song loaded. Alright. Well, that's how you do that. Um, we can press stop here and that just... Uh, made the Windows Media Player stop, so we'll play the song again. And we'll press the stop button, and now it stopped it. Uh, we can do the same for volume. Uh, so we'll play it again, turn down the volume, now it's muted. Make it really loud, ow. Okay, turn that off. Pause. Okay. 
Uh, and we can also skip the song, but I'm not going to do that because I don't know what copyrighted stuff is in my Windows Media Player library. And I know this is not copyrighted because it's one of the default Windows stuff, so it should be okay. So that's how you set it up for basic Windows Media Player controls. So if you want to save this profile now, you go to the little paper icon and click Save As, and then we'll save it as um, Windows... Windows Media Controls dot X Powder Profile. I think that's how you spell controls, hopefully. Oh well, it doesn't really matter because nobody else is going to see this but me and the internet, but whatever. Save it. All right, so now we have this thing here called Windows Media Controls and we've set up the controller to play and pause Windows Media Player. And this also works for VLC or any other media device you might have like uh, iTunes, for instance. Okay, now um, here's one of those gaming applications I've been telling you so much about for XPatter. Um, so now I'm going to show you the cheat bot that I've created for XPatter. This took me a really long time, but I was recording my process while I was making it, but it was really long, and um, it's just easier for me to show you it now, I guess. So I have Sims 1 running to the right here, um, and I have XPatter loaded right here, and I'm going to show you my, uh, my cheat bot's code real quick here. Um, so here is the code for my cheat bot here, this big stuff here. So basically what this boils down to is it waits one second, um, then types out control, holds down control shift and C at the same time to open the developer's console. Um, and then it types in the Sims, uh, the Sims 1 money cheat, which is Rosebud. So whenever I do, whenever I press the A button, it will open the console and it'll type in Rosebud, it'll press enter, it'll do it again and over and over again until I have lots of money. Um, so I have set I have set this to toggle as well um, so whenever I press it I can just let it go and do its thing and I don't have to hold it down the whole time to get it to keep doing that and I've also enabled turbo to make sure it's a bit quicker about doing it. Um, this is about as fast as you can leave it Otherwise, if you make it go any faster, then it just sort of won't work because it'll not have enough time to finish typing out the whole entire command. Um, but yeah, I found that about a 0 .80 second delay is pretty decent for that. Um, so now that I have this set up, I can show you what it does. So if we click over into the Sims here, um, we can press A on my on my controller. You can set this up on any way on your own controller. You can set it on any button. Um, but I'll show you now. I'll press A, and now it's typing it out on top there, as you can see. And then in the X pattern window too, you can also see that it's um, it's going green here, meaning that um, it's being pressed. So the controller is automatically pressing it um, every 0 0.8 seconds, um, and so it'll just keep playing this um, and keep putting in the code. And there's like one frame that it's making the D appear up here on top. Um, but since the cheat code's going by so fast, you don't actually see the D because it's just hitting enter as soon as the D is put in. Um, but it is working, as you can see. My money is increasing at the bottom. So if we said leave this for five minutes, then we could have a lot of money. So I'll be right back. Okay, so as you can see, I've let it sit for about five minutes now. Um, Bob's been sitting in this bathroom the whole time. I'm not sure why. Just, uh, just go watch some television, Bob. Goodness. Oh god, now it's saying no such cheat. Oh, okay, we screwed it up, we screwed it up, we screwed it up, we screwed it up, stop. And a lot of stuff like this happens too. Stop. Oh god, quit it. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. Okay, there we go, we fixed it. Now we'll escape out of here, and I'll just press A and start up again. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, um, as you can see, um... We have uh, this cheat set up now, and it'll just keep going as long as we don't touch anything, um, which is one of the negatives, because if you actually are doing stuff in the game, um, the developer's console won't open, or it'll stop typing in it, so you gotta be, you got to leave it open. It's very finicky, it's very picky, but if you just leave it sitting like this for a while, like I have for the last five minutes, you can get a lot of money accumulated, and since there's no cheat that automatically sets the amount of money you have in the game like there is in The Sims 2 and 3, um, it's a really useful thing to have. Uh, so yeah, let me just stop that. All right. Um, so now I'm going to show you how the code works. So I'm going to go in more depth here. So basically, I have a pause, and then I pressed Control Left Shift C, another pause, and make sure it's set to 0 0.01 seconds. R pause O pause S pause E pause 
B, pause, U, pause, D, and then enter. There's no pause in between because otherwise it would just be too slow for no reason. Um, and now, maybe we could even remove that to make it a bit faster. I'm just going to delete. I'll try it later. I'll try it later. But for now, that'll just be a thing that works. Make sure you have toggle enabled, and then make sure your turbo setting is set to enabled delay of 0.8 seconds. Or, yeah, 0.8 seconds. Um, and then you should be good to go. And there you go. You have your own little Sims 1 cheat bot set up. So you can save the profile now. Um, so I have this, I have one sort of loaded already, a name picked out. It's going to be botai.xpatter profile. Um, and then we're going to override it. Uh, but yeah, you can set up bots to do tons of different things in The Sims or in other games. Okay, so now we're going to do some more non-gaming stuff with XPatter. Um, first of all, I want to really quickly set the left stick to control the mouse. Um, so the easy way to do this is through the gear or the wrench. Um, but the hard way you'd think to do would be to come here and click like this and do it all like this and just go all the way through and do all those. Um, I just did it, but now I'm going to show you the quick way to do stuff like that because um, there is a very quick way to do it. So let's get rid of all those real quick. Now if we click this little wrench icon next to the control stick on the controller's picture, um, we can set it to mouse normal or you can invert it if you'd like. Um, or you can set it to WASD, arrow keys, etc. So I'm going to set it to mouse and then just set all of those to mouse with two clicks. And now we can control the mouse with our our left control stick. Um, now that might be a bit slow for some people so we're, we can go into the settings here um, and we can change, let's see, mouse settings and we can up the speed of the X and Y. So I'm gonna, I like to up it to about 80. 80 feels good to me. Um, but it's not as precise and you might misclick sometimes. Yeah, see, there we go. That's a bit quicker. Uh, so yeah, now we have the mouse moving significantly quicker than before, which is a really good thing to have. Um, and then another thing I like to do when I'm using it for Windows media purposes, like I like to put X as the start button here. So now whenever I press X, it'll bring up the start button, which is really handy. And you could actually control your whole entire computer like this. It's kind of cool. Um, so we can press A to click one, B to click two. So now we can right click uh, or we can click off. We can even click onto here and change keybinds now using what we have set up. So we could go, let's say we want to make Y, and I'm going to do this all with the controller. We'll make Y bring up the calculator. So now if we press Y, there's the calculator, and we can use the calculator. Two uh, plus three is uh, five. There you go. That's some of the useful features of this that you could use outside of gaming because there are lots of them actually. Um, if you wanted to you could put some keys on here and be able to type certain things but it's kind of limited on what you could type. Um, so I wouldn't recommend that but you could have it refresh browsers. Uh, you could have it as a back button or a forward button, a stop button. A lot of these would be useful in Chrome, a search button, add to favorites, home button, etc, etc, etc. There's just lots of different things you could do. Um, and yeah, it's really nifty what you could do with this. Okay, so that's my tutorial on XPatter. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any further questions, consult the help button right up here, or you can comment and I'll be glad to help you out. Um, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like, leave a comment, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye! Test. How loud is this? Can you still hear me? I can't even hear myself, so I don't know. But you know, but you know, but you, but you know. But you know, this is music. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to me. Listen to me. Went to a freestyle rapping thing. Yeah. Rap. This isn't rap. But you know what? I'm... Don't give a crap. Brilliant music. Brilliant music. Mr. Scuff Ninja Tua. This is on Windows by default. Whoa, 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 whoa. X patter. X patter. Whoa. You don't even know. X patter. X patter. Buttons, buttons, pressing buttons, pressing more, pressing buttons, yeah.
I made Bob a DJ now. <laughs>